I've seen Stargirl Season 3 Episode 6 entitled The Betrayal, so now it's time to talk about it. If you're new here, spoilers are ahead, which does mean viewer discretion is advised. Now, on with the show. So if you're following along in your Stargirl Season 3 textbooks, you'll probably remember that at the end of last episode, Yolanda had snuck into Cindy's house, discovered the incriminating laptop that had been stolen from the gambler. As the audience, we already knew this, but this is the first time in the show any of the main characters knew this. And uh, that's basically where we left things off. This is big, big news for these young JSAers. Ugh. I really hate how I just said that. Let's pretend I didn't refer to them as such. Speaking of the JSA crew, however, now would be a good time to touch on them and my feelings on their lack of appearance in this season, or at least lack of anything substantial to do with the overall story up until now, because I do believe that is changing. So one of my biggest issues with the show thus far has been the fact that none of them have really had anything to do that really pertained to the plot. So you've got Yolanda, Beth, and Rick. They're all, as I would categorize, main characters, main cast members. So why aren't they giving that much to do? Well, partly I think that's because the large presence of Starman in this season, but also it has to do with the long overall plot. That's not really an episode-to-episode -episode thing. It's kind of this long, unraveling mystery. And that probably has to do with the fact that their stories don't have much to do with that yet. So it feels front-loaded with not much for them to do, but they're going to get some meat on their bones very, very shortly. So let's start off talking about Rick. Last season, his hourglass broke, and he's not been able to use it to the fullest extent, at least at this point. has been getting 23 minutes, 12 minutes. He hasn't been able to get the full hour. Sylvester, however, being a member of the original JSA, knowing the original Hour Man, knows a little bit about how it works and that there was some sort of governor internally in this hourglass to prevent it from giving him powers for longer than an hour. Rick takes this upon himself to go in there, figure it out, and he removes that limiter, that governor, whatever you want to call it, which means basically he's going to be able to potentially have unlimited powers. We start the episode with a pretty cool scene of himself in the gym working out. We see the time go past an hour, and he is super pumped about that. I'm wondering if this is going to couple with the fact that he's got as we've seen in previous seasons, unstable emotional leanings, and he's going to kind of have to deal with some sort of steroid or drug use allegory. That's at least what I think we may be heading towards as far as his storyline is concerned. Uh, then we've got Beth. I have to say that originally in season one and even parts of season two, Beth became one of my favorite characters. I like the fact that she is not really suited for being out in the field and being a fighter and being in the mix of things, but she's pretty smart. She's good with her tech. And overall, I just liked her personality, especially after she toned it down a little bit from those couple early episodes from season one. She was an overall favorite. However, she's had, I think, the most damage this season with little to do. They've kind of given her a storyline that I don't think fits her at all, just in service of the fact that they need to give her something to keep her busy and something to do. And that storyline has to do with her parents. So they've discovered that she is the new Dr. Midnight. She is superheroing, I guess, for lack of a better term. And they just, uh, they want to help out as much as possible. They want to, in essence, be her sidekicks or whatever. And she finally flips in this episode and tells them, you know, leave me alone. I don't want you out there. I'm going to go out in the field and do these things, and I don't want you involved because that's going to get you hurt. Just didn't quite feel genuine to me. It didn't feel like this is a realistic thing that would be happening, especially this situation. Now, I understand the entire premise of the show is unrealistic. These superheroes, this setting, all of that. But this just was a little wacky to me, and I hope that changes soon and we actually get a better story for Beth. And based on the end of this episode, we may be getting that. I also can't say that they've given Yolanda that much to do, at least in her superhero role, but outside of that, she's had quite a bit to do because she's more intrinsically linked to this show than some of the other characters. She's got her school relationship with Courtney and friends. She has her diner waitressing job, and then she's got her other subplot of her family and how they're uh, treating her based on actions that happened prior to season one of this show. So she has stuff going on, even when it doesn't link to the overall plot and superheroing. So she does feel a little bit more uh, built up than some of the other characters at this point. So let's move on to Courtney who's been pretty absent from the JSA these past two or three episodes. It wasn't necessarily readily apparent when she first started drifting away, and I want to touch on something that I'm feeling about this show in general. So unlike season two, I do believe this season, 
at least up to episode six, would do much better watching it in a binge model because it is a very slow burn. Things are being revealed. Things are moving along, not necessarily in the breakneck speed that season two did. And I think that might benefit this show in hindsight if you were to watch these things without a week, sometimes a two week break in between. But we'll have to see because right now I'm not viewing it that way. <laughs> also, Mike and Jakeem, they've got a fairly cute side story going on where they're trying to be, I guess, private detectives in a sense, trying to figure things out on their own since the JSA doesn't take them seriously. And that's a fine side story. I'm enjoying it for what it is, but it feels disconnected from the rest of the show at large. To me, it feels like it could have just been shot entirely separate and it wasn't even linked aside from occasionally bringing in another character for a scene or two. And I don't really know where they're going with this, so I guess we'll have to let that play out before my final thoughts really come out on them. But back to Courtney, because I started talking about her earlier and how she's been basically ghosting the JSA for the last couple of episodes. That's primarily because of her relationship with Cameron and helping him develop his powers and growing closer to him. This leads to a couple of things. It allows Sylvester, the older version of Starman, to somewhat take over things by leading the JSA. I feel like this is going to come back in a couple of ways obviously with Courtney, but also with Pat, because that was kind of his de facto role earlier. Courtney was technically in charge of the JSA, but he was more like their mentor and their role model. So with Sylvester coming in to fill both roles, I feel like these two characters are going to have something to say about that. Uh, it also causes tension between Courtney and the rest of the JSA and the rest of her friends. In fact, by the end of the episode, she is effectively no longer in charge and the other members cast her out. They're pretty upset and they for the most part, break off contact with her for a while. This obviously all stems from a final confrontation with Cindy and Yolanda a little later in the episode. After Beth copies the files from the gambler's laptop, they decide that Yolanda should sneak back, put it under her bed so she doesn't realize. Of course, that doesn't go well. She catches Yolanda breaking into a room. They have actually a pretty decent fight that spills out into the yard. The rest of the JSA members come. It's kind of a cool scene. And then finally, Courtney S. Stargirl shows up in a pretty cool special effects laden scene. And they have this confrontation. Cindy comes clean about her real use for the laptop. It's basically what I've been assuming in my past few reviews that she was using the laptop to track down her father, a.k.a. Dragon King's old lairs, to try and figure out some remedy for herself because she is in fact mutating and turning into something against her will. And it's especially increased since she came back from the Shadowlands after Eclipso put her there last season. So that's interesting. Are they somehow related or did that just kind of exacerbate a situation that was already going on? I haven't really given that much thought yet, but that is a cool link. After Cindy comes clean, Courtney kind of throws a little barb at her like, well, you should have just been honest with us. And then Cindy says, <laughs> Well, 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 Courtney, you're not being honest with your other friends. You're out there training Icicle Jr. and you haven't told your friends he's got powers or anything. And this is what leads to the rift between Courtney and the JSA. And of course, Cindy is also in a rift with them already. So our whole team, for lack of a better term, is broken up right now. Nobody is really together. Um, I guess Yolanda and Beth are still together, but Rick's still kind of playing on the outside too, so... We don't really have a cohesive team by the time this episode ends. And before I get to the final reveal, I do want to mention a couple of other things and a couple other thoughts I've had while watching the season and this episode in particular. So Sylvester in this episode was very balanced and thoughtful, and that's not really something we've seen since he's come back to life, especially in the beginning of this season. I'm wondering if there's something more ominous going on because the fact that he's not acting weird is throwing off more warning bells to me than when he is acting weird. That and he is now kind of back as Starman and back in control of the new JSA. I'm wondering if he's got some sort of control thing going on and now he feels like he's fulfilling that part of his life that he lost. So maybe he's balanced more so, but I don't know. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, also, I want to mention Artemis. There is this whole subplot at the beginning of the season where she was trying to join the JSA and that struck me a little weird because we barely ever even saw the actress. We saw her a couple times in the school. She was wearing a mask when she was doing all her stuff. And then she's just been gone from the show since. So what's going on with Artemis? I feel as if she should play a much larger role, especially with the Crocs living next door and kind of popping in every once in a while and her wanting to join the team. I don't know. Where is she? Also, where's Jenny, the Green Lantern's daughter? I think she's coming up a little later in the season. And as I said, they've already had such a problem juggling the characters they have. I guess it doesn't make sense to add more into the mix. It's just something that sticks out to me. 
One other point, Yolanda's family is deeply Catholic, as is Yolanda. She's even going to confessionals and whatnot. And that's something that really sticks out to me because for a lot of the past, I don't even know how long, they really haven't depicted Catholicism or Christian religion at all in shows other than a punchline or as a joke. And the way that it's kind of woven into this series in a realistic way, I don't know, it just kind of feels refreshing to me. I'm not saying it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. It just sticks out because of the lack of it in other shows. Throughout the episode, we see a lot more of this situation with the guy monitoring all of the different locations. Uh, he's got the gloves on. We see him doing a puzzle, and it's pretty clear at this point that everyone believes he's going to be Mr. Bones, and that's probably going to be the reveal, because this also comes to a head almost at the end of this episode, where uh, Beth finds that the live feed is on the laptop that she copied from the gambler. She's able to tap into it and sees that somebody is spying on all these locations. She's able to kind of sneak bring it to Courtney and Pat's attention, although she was pretty obvious. So it's conceivable that whoever is doing the watching noticed that they found out. I'm not entirely convinced of that because it could have just been played up for us, but we'll have to see in next episode because I do believe everything's coming to a head now with all of the reveals and events of this episode. Overall, I am still enjoying the season, but I think it's such a departure from season two that it may be jarring to some people. There's very little in the way of superheroics, at least in a lot of the episodes, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but the last two episodes or so, I've slowed down a little bit on my enjoyment, even though it picked up quite a bit at the end of this episode. I do think it's definitely just blown the door off the plot, so I expect things to ramp up entirely starting with the next episode, and I am pumped to see where we go next. So what are your thoughts? Are you enjoying Stargirl? Not watching it at all or somewhere in the middle? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section and leave a like while you're there. And until next time, keep on shining.